Welcome to my one take look at the Proton Aerobac. Let's get started. First of all, you'll note it's um, many different colors. And interestingly, these bumpers are not plastic. They're metal. Um, so yes, that's clearly off a different car. It's had a thump up the front at some point. The bonnet is off a Mitsubishi Colt and it doesn't quite seem long enough. I think it should come just a bit further forward than that. There you go, that's what you get. Um, missing the grille badge. Should proudly have a Proton badge there, but I haven't. Got 13 inch wheels with nice chunky tyres on. And being the aero back, you get this useful boot as well. Let's go and have a boot in the boot. We've got remote release for boot and fuel flap. Fairly standard Japanese stuff. Uh, open the boot up. It's mostly full of straw. Uh, this used to be used on a small holding and I haven't had a chance to clean it yet. But there you go, nice capacious boot. Nice noise when you close the boot. Um, let's have a look under the bonnet because I know people were sad we didn't do this last time. So there we go, bonnet release. Find a catch. There we go, look at that one oily magma engine. This is the earlier eight valve incarnation of the engine. Um, the following year after this one was built, they went to a 12 valve, two inlet, one exhaust per cylinder. Um, there's white stuff all over there for reasons I don't fully understand. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, servo doesn't look in the best of condition. Maybe it explains why the brakes are awful. But yes, lot, lots of oil down there. This, this is not what you'd call the concourse engine bay, is it? Uh, nice bit of rot in that corner may have to do something about that. Might have to do something about engine mountings as well because this engine seems to rock around a lot when you're driving. But otherwise it's okay. Clang. I think we should probably help up board now. So inside my dream proton obviously I've got the sunroof uh, which is one of these windy jobbies. Back it goes. Um, unfortunately there's a bit of a rattle because the glass seems seems to be a bit loose so I, I don't currently like having it open very much so I'm going to close it again that windy windy way there we go so that's a Wabasto unit it was fitted in the UK uh, the downsides to having a sunroof are it can get a bit leaky and um, oh that's my hand let's go and have a look at some other issues it can cause yeah yeah, all, all you envious Malaysians, look, look at the rot problems I've now got because it's got a sunroof. You can see where it was all taped off originally. Oh, get back in, too windy. Uh, yeah, it, it, um, that, that was the solution to it leaking, was to just plaster it in plastic. Uh, inside, we've got what I think is the earlier um, Lancer interior. Uh, I had a Colt last summer, and the centre console was a bit more built out in that and came to about here. Um, Blowpunk radio, which I think works. To scare its main backer. And there you go, that was Radio 4. Um, we've got two tiny little speakers, I'm not sure that one over there is working. Uh, we've got some random strips of Velcro on the dashboard, just like the Nissan Bluebird itself. Let's take a look at the filthy dash pinnacle. Uh, the temperature gauge is stuck up there, so I need to take all this apart and try and free that off at some point. It'd be nice to know what's actually going on. Um, there's a warning light for when you've got the door open, uh, just in case the interior light is not enough. Random switch gear tucked away down the side there for your hazards, fog light, and um, I'm not sure what that one would have been. Maybe electric mirrors if you were at, had anything sufficiently plush. Heated rear window, and um, that about ends the luxurious equipment. It's um, manual winding windows, I can't wind this one down or it won't go back up. Um, we've got rotating dials for the wipers, um, so this one does those wipers, this little bit here does the rear wiper, the rear wiper which doesn't park at the moment, so I can stop it wherever I like for better aerodynamics. Uh, the other side is rotating dial for lights, and then you've got a more conventional stalk for your main beam and your indicators, which aren't going to work so I haven't got the ignition on. So yeah, five speed gearbox, lots of filth. Um, it's not a bad driving position, but I do find the pedals just a bit close for my liking. Let's take a look in the back. I thought I unlocked that door. Ill prepared. Right, 
Ugh. In the back, um, yeah, not the most leg room behind the seat set for me, um, but it's comfortable enough that the headlining, oh, 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 the headlining's knackered. Um, it's probably full of water from that leaky sunroof. Look at the mould. This car is glorious. And it's the, the smell in here is quite remarkable. It's a mixture of dog and um, some stuff I put in here to try and get rid of the smell of dog. Um, it's not it's, it's not good. Right, um, driving. Let's go and do some driving. Because we're up to five minutes already. And you're probably really, really bored. This isn't good for my audience retention. Into the main to go. There we go. Make sure you're definitely secure. And we'll go for a drive. So that fires nice and promptly into life. It's um, an automatic choke, um, seems to work pretty well. The revs don't always drop back down to tick over all that readily, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Definitely something a bit rattly on the front. Um, I, I think one of the inner track rod ends is a bit loose. Uh, it was um, a verbal advisory on the MOT, he told me about it. Um, I'm going to do something about that quite urgently. Uh, put myself a lovely junction to pull out of. And go, 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 go! See, uh, 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 I think there's an engine mounting go. I'm not doing a 0 to 60 because we're going uphill and that would be unfair. But we are already up to 50, and I'm going to slow down for a bend. The steering is very nicely weighted. Um, I do occasionally get caught out when I forget it isn't power assisted, usually when parking, then I go to do something a bit one-handed and suddenly realize I can't. Uh, this model does not have um, height adjustment on the driver's seat, which means the concerns Chris Goffey had about catching your thumb and your fingernails on the edge of the seat are not an issue here, so don't worry Mr. Goffey. Also you'll have noticed I was able to open the door without a beeper going off. So perhaps someone's already chucked the fuse for this car in a canal. If you have no idea what I'm on about, try and find the original Top Gear test video for the Protons when they first came out in the UK. I think the engine needs a service. It doesn't pull all that well. We're up to 4,000 revs. 60 miles an hour. Up a really rather steep hill. So yeah, we're getting a shift on. Um, handling's okay, I, I don't think the tyres are very good and it does roll a bit, but I'm not averse to a bit of roll because the suspension is very good, the ride is very pleasant. It's excellent over speed humps. Um, you hit them and wait for the jolt and it just kind of floats over them in a way I was not expecting. They're gonna manhandle it into the bends a bit, but it, it's really, really rather pleasant. Far more pleasant than the Mitsubishi Colt I had last year, which had power steering, which was far too light, and you hadn't got a clue what the front wheels were doing. With a reasonable amount of feedback here, I, I feel safe. I, I know what's going on. Uh, yeah, below 3,000 revs, it doesn't want to pull cleanly at all. Uh, I haven't even serviced this car yet. Um, I've got an oil filter. Uh, I need to get an air filter, plugs, I may even do ignition leads, just because it just doesn't feel quite right at the moment. I hope the problem isn't with a carburetor. Right, over this difficult crest and we can get the hoon on again. Downhill. Whoa! Yeah, it, it, it does roll a bit when you start really pushing on. And um, I don't doubt for a moment it might go skidding off the road if I get a bit too carried away. But yeah, I reckon it's all right myself. Um, it, it's not the last word in excitement. The brakes are pretty terrible, which I think is the rears, because when I pull the handbrake on, it sounds horrible. So um, yeah, I, I think rear brakes need to be looked at. It's all part of the service I still haven't given this car, so that needs to happen. So 
there are very few of these first generation protons left because ultimately they do succumb to rot. Not as bad as some of their contemporaries, it must be said, but they are disappearing fast, which is why I thought I'd grab one while I still can. Sorry, a bit of gravel on the road. This might be a good place to do a 0 to 60. Let's make sure there's no one behind me. I'll just get over this crest. Oh, 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 oh. Right. My very first video in this Leaf, I'll do a 0 to 60 test right here. Let's see how this compares. bad at all for a little car. A bit of 1.5, it comes into the cheaper tax category for pre-2001 vehicles. So that's nice, I'm saving a few quid every month over the Honda, and it doesn't feel a lot slower. I mean, sure, I have to change gear myself, but you know, sometimes these things happen, don't they? Can't have to run over locals. Gearbox is a bit clunky, but um, it works well enough, so that's all right. What a beautiful day in paradise. So there you go, that's my one take look at my Proton. If you've got any queries or questions about this car, leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to know more about me generally, head to hubnut.org or find me on Twitter as hubnutvids or on Facebook as Ian Seabrook. Uh, there's usually a 2CV floating around in a profile picture to help you find me. Um, yeah, that's it. Don't forget to subscribe and see what I'm driving in my next video. Farewell.